Um, and that was like a year and a half ago that we first had those experiences. It was all in my mind about Mark, Mark's pleasure doing the thing that's going to, you know, satisfy him, turn him on, get him excited because that feels good to me. Right. Um, and we realized that that wasn't good enough, that my motivation to please him would not make this work. That that motivation needed to come from me to want this as well. And that was a hard thing to to come to terms with because I had to now dig in into myself, right? And like discover what I wanted to be able to truly be honest about whether I wanted to go into this journey with him or not. Right. So initially it was more like, okay, I'll do this for him. And then it was like, yeah, that's not good enough. You need to know that you want this for you. Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their fascinating stories. We strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy approach to non-monogamy. However, it's important to remember that everyone does it a little bit differently, and the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect our own. Additionally, we produce this show for entertainment purposes only. Please be aware that we aren't doctors or therapists. Consult a medical professional for anything regarding your health that you might learn about on the show. Enjoy! Well, welcome to episode 308. We're Finn and Emma, and today we have a beautiful conversation with Brew and Mark. They have been together over 18 years, married over 18 years, actually, but they're very new to non-monogamy only the last few years and have gone very slow. We just have a beautiful conversation around their experiences and undoing a lot of narratives that they're experiencing as they go through this process. And just, it's a powerful conversation. Yeah. I think my, my two cents on this is, you know, as you, as you listened, right. When we start these episodes, there's always a snippet uh, of, of conversation that we grab from something that the guests say. And it was damn near impossible to find one for this conversation because I had about 70 to choose from. You could pick them all. And literally every single thing they said was basically I could have cut it and put it up front. So I had to pick one and I picked one. I feel good about it. But (laughs) just know that this conversation is full of incredible conversation. Yes. Yeah. So there's a few other things we need to tell you about that are important about this conversation. Number one is there is... A trigger warning here happens about 50 minutes into the interview itself. Before that, there is a short, uh, a brief conversation where Mark asks Brew, hey, can I mention something around uh, complex PTSD? And they touch on it, but they don't actually talk about anything that I would deem triggering at that point. But again, around 50 minutes, Brew shares a little bit about what her experience was. And so we wanted you to be aware that there is a short conversation about healing the childhood trauma that she experienced. And so we need you to be aware of that uh, going forward. Yes. We also wanted to clarify that we do use, uh, we call her Brunella in the episode. We have consent to do that. That was discussed ahead of time. So I uh, just want to make clear, make that clear too. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually what happens is I screwed it up. <laughs> And she was like, no, no, it's totally fine. And then I edited it out. And then as I was editing it later, Mark calls her Brunella like two or three more times. And I was like, okay, well, I can't I can't take care of all of these. Some of them are kind of tough. So we got her permission to use her name. So yeah, yes. just wanted you all to be aware. <laughs> okay, with that, we are going to jump into this amazing interview with uh, Brew and Mark. For anyone who is a premium subscriber and for the rest of you, we have a couple of other things we need to tell you about. First up, if you're not familiar with the premium subscription, it is a way to skip all of these announcements up front, jump right into the interview. You can sign up for as little as a couple dollars a year. Go to our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, scroll down on the homepage, and you can find out all of the information and links there. Next up, we wanted to remind you that we've recently launched a new series of episodes that we're going to be doing. Those will be called the Ask Us Anything episodes. So once a month, I'm going to partner with Miche, who is a therapist and coach from Expansive Connection. And the two of us, sometimes Emma's going to pop in as a as a wonderful cameo mm-hmm. to help us answer. But we're going to answer your questions about non-monogamy or non-monogamy adjacent things. So please 
head over to our website, again, normalizingnonmonogamy.com, click on the podcast tab, and there's a drop down there. And one of the options says, ask us anything. And you can find out right there how to send us a voicemail that will be used on the show. And then we will use that to answer your question. Yes. For the world. For the world. Yes. To hear. <laughs> we're, we're pretty pumped about these. So please, please, we would love to answer your question. Also, next up, a quick reminder that we are back at it doing virtual meet and greets. These are open to anyone. You just must be open-minded and respectful. We had one in September, and our next one is going to be October 20th. We do these once a month. You can sign up on our website. Now you can go sign up on our website, normalizingnonmonogamy.com. Click on the events tab and sign up there. Next up, next up, next up. We'll just keep saying next up. <laughs> <laughs> we usually tell you about our community here, and we're still going to do that, but we're actually not going to do it. We have some special guests to help us. But just a reminder, everything that they are about to talk about, you can learn more about by going to our website and clicking on the community tab and signing up for just a couple of bucks a month. You get a monthly Q&A, you get a men's and a women's group every month, and you get ongoing support all day, every day in a virtual community space that is called Mighty Networks. And that will be important as you hear these two lovely humans talk. And in fact, the two lovely humans talking about it are the same two that I could not pick a snippet for earlier. They're, they're the same two for the interview today. They're the same two people. They're part of our community. And these are the types of people that you, listener, get to interact with if you join our community. So you're going to hear a snippet right now from Mark and Brew. You'll hear it later in the interview as well. But we wanted, it was so powerful and so important. We wanted to play it here too. I would, I would say uh, for anybody listening that seek seek to learn um right reach out because doing this alone is harder than it needs to be uh seek community we found that in the beginning when we were doing it on our own and like kind of researching and listening but uh, it was it helped but then once we started looking for community uh joining your community on um uh, mighty and then also a uh, local community that we recently found um it it just helps us feel less lonely it helps us feel connected right it 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 helps it encourages us right when you hear about other people's success and or and challenges. It, it, or challenges right um yes can you do it alone yeah but if you can do it with support and and help um it will be so much better so i would say that like find a way to to connect with others and so thank you mark and brew for that and thank you for coming on the show and sharing and for being part of our community you are amazing before we jump into the interview we do have one more quick announcement and that's a reminder to go check out stdcheck.com it's our favorite way to get tested for stis and know your sexual health status by using the links well, no ours uh, we, no don't, we don't need to know theirs. Well, no, you know your <laughs> own. You know your own by going to get tested. Uh, by using the links on the resources page, you can save $10, making a 10-panel test $129, and you can also support the podcast and the show. So thank you so much in advance for using those links. Uh, STD Check is the way that we get tested for STIs. It's fast and uh, super simple, efficient, discreet, all of those things. And amazing. And amazing. Just like you. Yes. You hear us talk about it all of the time. We just can't recommend it enough. And so please send us an email. Send us a voicemail. We'd love to hear from you if you'd like to come on the show, if you have any thoughts or feedback from us, or if you have one of those amazing Ask Us Anything questions, we'd love to hear them. Yes. And with that... Let's go talk to Mark and Brew. Let's go. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome to the podcast, Mark and Brew. We are excited to have you here today. Before we get started, do you mind just introducing yourselves however you're comfortable and we'll take it from there? Sure. Sure. Yeah, we could do that. Thanks for having us. Of course. Uh, I'm Mark, 37 years old, born and raised in the Northeast of the US. Uh, we still live here. And this is my lovely wife, Brew. Am I going now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Brew, same age, 37. Um, we um, live. I've lived in the U.S. for about 22 years now. I'm originally from Uruguay, South America. We've been married for almost 18 years. In about three weeks, it will be 18 years. We're high school, high school sweethearts. Um, we have three children, and 
we're in this adventure of non-monogamy Life. very recently. Uh, lots, lots to learn and grow. And so we're excited to share with you guys. Wonderful. Well, we are excited. We don't often get to talk to people who are like brand new. And so we're excited about that. And and off camera, we talked about there being some nerves and we have a special way to get over nerves. And that is asking one of the hardest questions we ever ask on the show, which is when you make a grilled cheese sandwich, <laughs> how do you cut your grilled cheese sandwich? I like diagonal. All my sandwiches have to go diagonal. Why cut it? <laughs> Why what? cut it? Mark, Mark said no cutter. The whole, the whole thing, you know, just, you know. I don't like assumptive questions, so, you know. Well, Brew was actually got the correct answer. It is diagonal, <laughs> so you passed. <laughs> and the answer is for optimal dunking into tomato soup. Yes. Mm. Yes. See? However, right. there's also... There is no right... Well, There's no right way. I'm going to call bananas on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everyone can do it their own way. I suppose if people want to do it the wrong way. It's really off brand for you, Finn. I mean, (laughs) right. To to dictate there is one right way to do something. (laughs) Well, I'm serious about my grilled cheese. (laughs) All right. With that in mind, we'd love to hear about this adventure you're about to go on. Where sort of where are the two of you in the process of exploring and discovering non-monogamy? I guess I'll be the talker to him. He's he's gonna get to talking. Don't worry, he has no issues with that. <laughs> um, so we are um, very new, which is exciting, and and likewise, we feel that we've been listening to your podcast, you know, forever. And as soon as we found that we fell in love with it, and we've listened to all the different stories. We love the diversity. Uh, but one of the things we noticed is that a lot of people had a lot of experience, and we're like, we we love to go on because you know, the newbies, right? Like very early in the stage, I think um, it helped us a lot to to learn about the different things and to hear from people who are in similar positions. So we want to share that as well, right? With other people that maybe uh, benefit from it. So we, wh- where we are right now, uh, we're about two years into exploring and that exploration has been very slow. It's been a lot of initially researching, reading, Talking, lots of difficult communi- you know, conversations, crying, yeah. fighting, <laughs> right? Um, and then getting comfortable with the idea of like dipping our toes in, right? And then that started with um, a little bit of hot wifing dynamic, which is what initially interested Mark more, the idea of me going out um, and that pleasure aspect of, of what... Um, turn him on. And then as we progressed through that, um, had just a few experiences, then, um, paused and talked more and then realized, um, there's, we want to do things a different way. So now where we are now is where, um, we don't have titles. Like our relationship doesn't have a hard definition. I think we're like sort of swinger, swinger ish. Um, and we're, um, looking to just connect with like-minded people, mainly couples to, you know, just be friends at first and then see where that takes us. So there's no hard, like goal that things have to be sexual with anybody but obviously we want that otherwise we wouldn't be doing this but uh, (laughs) we just want to be able to make connections with people that we can be our true selves with and not have to hide that aspect of our lives um so nothing is very like clear right now as to (laughs) You know what we are and aren't. Yeah, yeah. That's why we're very super. I know we know. Yeah, I think we know. We both realize that like labels help. They help Mm -hmm. kind of like cut through some of the like you know monogamous versus non-monogamous. Like helps you understand. Like, but um, I I think we like monogamish swingerish. We we want to have you know we're we're kind of are building from scratch in terms of like uh our friends and our community are like our surrounding because we both come from uh we were uh, evangelical christian for pretty much since we got married we were a couple who like we waited to have sex before marriage and you know i think i i i wasn't christian when i first met her she was 
And like, she would take me to church. And like, I was actually at the time when we met many moons ago, um, I was a, uh, I would, a practicing Muslim. So it was something that I had, I was always kind of looking for like you in the people on the podcast could see my air quotes, the, mm-hmm. the truth. Yeah. Um, and so I was, I would like go to church with her and I would like bring my Quran and like try to compare it. And, uh, but anyway, I converted maybe two months before, before we got, we got married. married. And, um, and this is I all just it, for like context. This is all in like your teenage years, early twenties, yeah. correct? Like, yeah, we got young. married when we were nineteen. Okay, so all so, in your teenage years. Yeah, very, very, very young. Very, very young. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, um, yeah, so we, I converted, and I did it like honestly. I didn't do it because like she didn't give me like an ultimatum or anything. Nobody, nobody really said like, hey, if you don't convert, you're you can't do this or just. I did it because I wanted to. It was genuine, and. Um, we from that point until like for me it was like m- my process to like deconstruct or like move away from that faith started probably about 2017 2018 for her i think it happened uh, maybe a couple years after that maybe one or two years after that and part of my deconstruction was um you know looking at sex and relationships through a different light. Whereas before it was kind of filled with, um, shame, shame and, and, and what's the other word? The G word guilt. guilt that's it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I felt really shitty for the things that turned me on for a long time. And you know, I started to be able to just kind of look at that without the guilt and the shame. And that led to us, having that conver- having a few conversations initially about i guess it would be more like kink related less mm-hmm. it involved non-monogamy but it wasn't like i i didn't go into it saying hey i'm non-monogamous or i want to practice non-monogamy i was like hey this idea really turns me on what do you think about it um and me say what <laughs> <laughs> i love that you said that Brooke, because that was going to be my question is how i mean coming out of the construct that you two were in and also having known each other i mean all of your formative years mm-hmm. how do you have that conversation because right that that implies right you've been hiding stuff and also it's probably completely against everything that you two are learning in church unless what you mean by evangelical christian is very different than no. what we've been hearing about in the past. <laughs> no, we went to, we, so the churches that we went to, oddly enough, they, a lot of the stereotype stuff, it was more background than like mm-hmm. foreground. So like they weren't like being ultra non-inclusive, right? Sure. They weren't like, it was more about like, you know, loving people and, and, and even like, and, and again, like I don't look back on that and like, I have, I have a, a lot of nuanced views about my time as a Christian. I look back and see like, well, you know what it, I was really, really insecure and I was a teenager. What, in, what teenager isn't, but you know, I was a teenager and I was incredibly insecure. I really didn't like myself. And the idea of getting this kind of like unconditional love that mm-hmm. somebody would accept me as I am and really, really spoke to me. And it it helped me. It helped me in that aspect to like myself and learn to love myself. And, yeah. you know, it helped me there. Unfortunately, as I've gotten older and learned about it, it, it just comes with other things, the baggage that it comes with, the cost of admission. Again, I do a lot of air quotes, so I'm sorry, okay. podcasters. <laughs> um, the cost of admission is not something that now I look back and say I'm comfortable with because sure. I felt, yeah. it just, you know, I had to, I had to be exclusionary. Once, especially like I, I got, like both of us, we were not like just members. We were youth pastors. <laughs> we were on leadership boards. You were in it. You were in we it. Were in it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, yeah, and this isn't to shit on Christianity or religion, but it was, well, I guess where I was kind of going was seemingly the things you were interested in would not align with the values of the church you were a part of. <laughs> not at all. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, diff- the hardest thing for me, I mean, a lot of it is hard. And it was hard and it's still hard. Uh, you know, different, there's different challenges today than there was, you know, two years ago. Um, but, the hard thing was listening to what, 
you know, Mark opening up about his um, king and the things that are him out and his different views just that on relationships as a whole and t- and taking it because of my own trauma and my own personal issues as like I'm failing. There's something wrong. You know, why would he want this? There must be a problem, right? Is he not satisfied? Is there, you know, um, I'm not enough. You know, there's something wrong with our relationship because why would you, right? And that came from the idea that has been instilled in me through the through Christianity and also through my culture. Because as a Hispanic woman, I grew up with hearing a lot of time, you know, you need to take care of your man. You need to take care of your man. You need to meet his needs because otherwise they'll find it somewhere else. They're, they're going to, you know, men are going to be men. And that's, you know, it won't want to happen. Want to happen? I, can, I don't know. What? It's, it's going to happen. Like you mm-hmm. can't avoid it. If you don't meet, satisfy him, he's going to need, he's going to need it. He's going to go get it somewhere else. So then I hear that and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm failing. I'm not doing this thing. Obviously there's something wrong. How do I fix it? I'm a fixer. So I have to fix it. Right. And I, it was very shocking at the moment. Cause like he said, we were still in the church. Now he had had time to process this in secret. Right. Go th- he knew his heart, he knew his feelings, he knew his body. So he, as he felt things coming up, he could process them quietly, right? Mm-hmm. Now I'm hit with all these things. Yeah, right? I, back- I backed up once. the dump truck and was like, here you go. Yeah. <laughs> so that was very overwhelming. And I, yeah. and, and my response was not positive. Not and, positive. And when, when was this approximately? How many years ago? Yeah, that was about two, two and change. Years. Okay, so I relatively recently, as far as the amount of time you've been together. Yeah. Yes. And again, at that time, I didn't even know. I've heard this a lot on your podcast, and it, it resonates with me, where people say they didn't have the language. They didn't <laughs> They didn't know this was a thing. Uh, I didn't even know hot wifing, never mind non-monogamy and, and all the other stuff, all the dynamics that happen there and the language that can help people define things. But I didn't know hot wifing was a thing. Mm-hmm. So I started Googling it and, you know, uh, I Googled, but I, but to be honest, I kind of, I learned, although I had time to process it and I definitely looking back in the past, I wish, I wish I would have been more honest up front. I wouldn't have had to do this in, in like by myself or in hiding. Um, you know, I, 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 I looked up, I learned a lot of things about it after I shared it with her as well. Because it was at that point where I felt like that, you know, the people say like the, like this weight had been lifted off my chest. I started to feel more like, oh my God, I, I can be honest. And even though she, it, it was hard for her to take, um, I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. Like this isn't going to work if it's, it, and it doesn't make sense. Like it hit me, like the, the light went off in my head it was like, it doesn't make sense. Like why, why not be honest? Like let's just, now it's the, you know, Pandora's box is open. So let's just, let's just put all the, all, all the variables out there and see how it goes. And, and had you started like backing away from the church before that? Yeah. Okay. So there, yeah, there was a, a little bit of a, uh, well, this is like tw- 2020 and like end of 2021, 2022, mm-hmm. we had already stopped going to church partially, not because we were interested in non-monogamy necessarily. It was because of, uh, things related to COVID, um, me having really starting at that point to have really fundamental uh, beliefs and differences about uh, th- things related to COVID, things related to politics, things related to, in my view, just the treatment of people. And I, we, I said we were on, we were like part of the leadership. And so like, you know, there were things that were going on behind the scenes of the church that I was like, I'm genuinely upset and uncomfortable about this. And uh, I don't think I can be a part of it anymore. And we kind of like, because it was like, because of COVID, like we stopped, they, they, you know, in our, not every state did this, but where we live, they. <laughs> because of where we live, um, uh, the church was shut down for a stop. while. They yeah. were shut down for a while yeah. and we stopped going and we kind of like, we both shared this feeling of like, we don't really miss it. Like, we're not like, I, oh man, I can't wait for church to start up again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like this is kind of nice, actually, <laughs> and uh, that kind of started us like, uh, like shying away, not not really becoming active members. 
uh, and at simultaneously starting to question our core beliefs and the things that we kind of followed. We, we were always more liberal, even when we were in it, uh, not just politically, but just, I guess you could say politically too, but it was just like, we always like, you know, like I remember having arguments when the U S Supreme court, uh, quote unquote, legalized same sex marriages. And I was like, yeah, I'm all for this. Like, why would you not be for this? Like, even though at that time I didn't believe it was the, the, (laughs) I feel so bad saying this, but the right lifestyle. Um, we don't believe that anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I, I feel bad saying it now, but at the point that's, I was like, but those people should be allowed to have to do the same thing. Like, why are you going to stop consenting adults? And I was kind of shunned and like people like would, oh, you know, a gasp when I would share my views on that. But as an example, but we like, that was really like COVID was really like a, a breaking point for us when we started to shy away from actually going and being members of, of, a, of a church. Yeah. Thank you for expanding on that. I didn't mean to necessarily link like leaving the church with non-monogamy specifically no, no, like yeah, no. there, there it's an evolution right and that was part yeah. of it that's a part of it and there were lots yeah. of other reasons why you moved away from the church too it's, i i believe it was very important in our process of of exploring non-monogamy because things would have been different had we not also been leaving the church at the same time uh because we've talked about the hypothetical if mark has shared this with me you know 10 years ago, you know, 15 years ago, if we had known going into our, ma- I wouldn't have married him. You know, it's horrible to think that way, but it is because, you That's know, we have we to were. be honest. That's yeah. who we were. I was so into it and like, so against so many things that this was like a big no, no, like no way. Like you don't even think about this stuff. You know, it's this, you get married and it's forever. And you know, uh, till what is the, till the death do us part. part, right. And we still love each other and are committed to each other tremendously, but are not at the expense of our own selves. And I think that was the big thing that we've learned through this whole process. Learning. We're still learning through <laughs> the process, yes. <laughs> Is that um we shouldn't burn ourselves to keep each other the other warm. We we use that mm-hmm. saying often. Um we shouldn't sacrifice our own needs and who we are in order to fit into this ideal scenario of what a marriage is supposed to be like, what a relationship should be like. Cause then how could you ever be truly happy in it? Right. Are you in it because this is good and this fulfills you? It makes you, you know, feel like you have, you're, you're enjoying life or are you in it because you're supposed to, because you signed a contract because somebody said, these Let the them rules. be, you know, now they're husband and wife, right? So I uh, I think now it's um, much more honest, right? The commitment was there then, but now now it's even more true uh, and, and more real because knowing everything, with everything on the table, we are still choosing each other, right? Where before it's like you chose each other, but you didn't know. Right. There's so much that was hidden. And then you have to question, well, would I still be with this person if I have everything? Right. If I know their best and their worst. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And so that's been a huge and continues to be a huge um, part of our exploration is that as we come up and we're honest with what turns us on, with what turns us off, with what we want, with what we feel. Are we still OK? Checking. You still want this. You still want me. You still want us. Right. Um and and then moving forward from that, you know, if that made sense. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. And I, I love, I mean, I just love how you framed all of that. And I'm, I get nervous about asking these types of questions. The next question I'm going to ask, because I don't want to make it seem like one of you is the reason or you are the one who I'm the reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I, I think you, you said something, Brew, that was really important, which was Mark knew these things and had a lot of time to sit and process them before he brought them. Yeah. And this is often the case, whether whichever person in the relationship is the person who's, who's sitting and thinking, there's this big thing that I've got to talk about. How do I do it? And you're processing and processing. And who knows that could be weeks. That could be years that this happens. Or sometimes we've talked to people, it's decades. And so then you bring it, like you said, Mike, you back the truck up and you dump it. And then it's, then you get to play a new game of sort of the 
while it's waiting to see if the other person can can what what is their processing time like, but also what comes out of their processing. And and I'm curious, Brew, for you, once once Mark dumped this on you and it almost in some ways like cracked open the world of you did that give you any type of freedom to say well what is it that i actually want now mm-hmm. yeah um so <laughs> it was not instantaneous mm-hmm. the freedom for me to open up to what it meant for me i think initially it was more about what does this even mean mm-hmm. uh and and again, at first, it was like almost like the stages of grief, right? Yep. And like, I don't know the order, so don't please, whoever's listening, this is my <laughs> be accurate, but right, there's that aspect of like, like freaking, you freak out, right? Like, I don't know what the, there's also some denial. Yeah. There's some, like, so there were so many emotions all at once of like the shock of it. Um, and, and it was also that grief aspect did apply because as we've talked about it um, many times after that, there's been a process of what our relationship was and what it is. And there was a grief in the sense of that the world as we knew it in monogamy and in religion and in, right, it it blew up, right? By, yes, Mark threw the bomb at it and it blew up. And so then it was, the, I think the best way that I've explained it afterwards is taking the pieces that we do want and then putting back together and adding new things to it and then putting it back together to what we really f- want and what really fits us and who we are. Right. So there was this, this world that this, I don't know, ball box, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that we fit into it's like a with, 3D all, puzzle. Yeah, with all mm-hmm. the things that we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to be as, as husband and wife, as parents, as Christians, as you know, human as, you know, any, as women, as, uh, I don't, I don't know. I already repeated myself, but, and, <laughs> and this is, you know, how you have to fit this, you have to fit this. And then he's like, no, this doesn't work. This is not good. And you just push on it and boom, it blew up. And now it's like, okay, well, what, which of those things I still want in my life, which of those things still apply, which of those things are still me and us. And then putting that together. And like I said, adding what we learn along the way that is new and we want it. Right. We, we welcome this yeah. into our relationship and no, that we don't want, right? Like get rid of it if it doesn't feel good. And then as we've progressed through it, not initially, even initially in the exploration, as we, I said, we started like opening up a little bit with the hot wifing. Um, and that was like a year and a half ago that we first had those experiences. Um, it was all in my mind about Mark, Mark's pleasure doing the thing that's going to you know satisfy him turn him on get him excited because that feels good to me right um and we realized that that wasn't good enough that my motivation to please him would not make this work that the motivation needed to come from me to want this as well and that was a hard thing to to come to terms with because i had to now dig in into myself, right? And like discover what I wanted to be able to truly be honest about whether I wanted to go into this journey with him or not. Mm-hmm. Right. So initially it was more like, okay, I'll do this for him. And then he was like, yeah, that's not good enough. You need to know that you want this for you. So then that's where it brings us to today where it's like, I wanted to, right? Do yeah. I still have difficulties? Um, and we can get into that if you want to, if you have time about trauma and issues that I had growing up, um, and, and how it affects my processing versus his processing of it. Uh, but I've also come to discover a lot, like you said, about me after mm-hmm. opening up to that idea, my own sexuality, realizing that I actually have curiosities, you know, by curiosities and which then I was like, never, I I think back about my childhood. I'm like, I never, I can't think about a moment when I felt this or thought this. And it was because I was so suppressed. So inside that box that that was never even a thought that I could like let happen. And now breaking out of that, it's like, well, 
what do you want? What do you like? And really being honest. And I'm happy. I'm, I, you know, as hard as it is, we're happy with how we've come to learn more about our, each other and our likes and dislikes and the things that make us. And I think yeah. for both of us, there's, there's kind of like two sides to it. There's one of the common things that happens in mon- mon- monogamy and definitely happened with us is in trying to break away from that norm is the codependency. Right. And so even in the beginning, it was like, it was still codependent. It was like her enjoyment was completely, almost completely dependent on me. And then I didn't like that. I was like, Oh, that doesn't feel great. I'm like, I, I, I want you to like, want to make me happy. I don't want to be with somebody who's like, how can I make my partner miserable today? Like, I don't, (laughs) I don't want that, but I don't want them to do things because of me. So I was asking like, do you like this? Do you want to do this? Is this something that, and, and her answer most of the time would be, nah, I'm doing it for you really. And then also like she mentioned, like, do you mind if I share about like your, the CPTSD, not, 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 I won't go with the two. I'll say, so it was the, the reason why it was hard is because part of the reason why, you know, Brunella may have some codependent te- tendencies is because she had suffered some childhood abuse in it and it, because it created that uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder that it, it kind of rewired her brain at that time. And then that's how she lived her life to always be thinking about others to always put others first, to always make everybody else happy, to always um, be a people pleaser. And so this, when we first started exploring it, was just another, you know, another color of that, of, yeah. of, of that. It was just, and the, like she said, we got to a point where, and where we both were like, I don't, I think we need to deal with some of the underlying issues uh, before we move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you both for touching on that. And, and thank you for sharing, you know, that is the importance of wanting it to go into non-monogamy or explore those types of relationships and whatever that means to you. It needs to be from both of you. Like you said, like the, I understand the default of um, people pleasing, wanting to do things for other people. I mean, so many of us are have those tendencies for a number of different reasons. Plus society kind of often tells you that too. Mm -hmm. And so there's all of that going on. And it's like, but coming back to be, you know, taking that time to really sit with, what do I want? What do I want to do moving forward? And uh, it is not that easy. So I just (laughs) appreciate both of you sharing that. But to answer your original question, Finn, our dynamic really is like, I'm the gas and she's the break. And like, that's okay. Like that's, I mean, I want her to be excited about it, but one of our challenges is, and, and where we've had to do a lot of hard work on not what I would call like a downward spiral where we're just now just like bouncing off of each other's like Insecure. tough emotions yeah. is like, I'm looking for her to share in the excitement for herself. And she's looking for me sometimes to like drop the bomb. And like another bomb, like the, now the truth. So in what, what that means and what the work that we've put in to do that is like, um, I have to accept that she's, even that she may get to being exciting about us, uh, excited about something that she is not going to be, she's not me. She's not, she's going to, um, not always share in, in the excitement that I may have about some new adventure or some, new person that or or couple that maybe we're talking to but the, and I have to be not only like okay with it I have to validate it and I have to like be like yes this is okay like it's okay for her to process this differently than me it doesn't mean like in my mind what tends to happen is like when I see her maybe approach something that she's not super excited about I tend to in my in my uh, initial like emotional reaction is like well she doesn't want this and that's not true and I have to, I have to fight my own, in my own mind to be like, she's processing it differently. It's okay. It doesn't mean she doesn't want it necessarily, but it also doesn't mean that she's going to want it either. Like I have to let her process it at her own time, her own speed and just check in with her 
and, you know, reassure where necessary. And we try, we just started this thing where we're going to start having regular check-ins. Whereas before it was like, it kind of dominated our conversations. Cause it was like, what do you think? What do you think? What do you feel? What do you feel? <laughs> and now we're like, okay, maybe we're going to save some of those conversations for a regular check-in. And, and then she has to be okay with me being excited and with me being like, but, I think in a car, like for a car to work, to use this analogy, like a car without gas is pointless and a car without brakes is dangerous. So you need, like, I've, I've gotten to the point now where I'm like, I'm really thankful for that dynamic in us because it doesn't mean we don't get to explore, which I think would be, I wouldn't want. It doesn't mean we don't get to, you know, be our authentic selves. It just means that we just need to go at a pace that's makes everybody safe and makes everybody, you know, um, feel included. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's such a hard balance to strike. How do we go fast enough that Mark doesn't feel held back, but slow enough that brew doesn't feel like it's out of control. Right. Yeah, we're not doing NASCAR or Formula One, which is, or worse, you know, I'm not trying to break the land barrier speed record. And yeah. like, it's, un, it's dangerous when you go too fast, right? Yeah. Some people are, are, some people can be speed junkies. I'm not, but I can, I can be if I don't, if I'm not careful with my own, mm -hmm. my own, like, I don't know what the word would be, like my own tendencies. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, it makes, it makes. I mean, it's very relatable. <laughs> so. our, our favorite word, and you said it, is balance. Mm -hmm. Balance and nuance are my two in, favorite things yeah, in the world. In our, <laughs> in everything, not just the the exploration of E and M, but uh, in parenting, in our job life, you know, work life balance. Uh, we just, you know, if it's it's too much, if you go too much towards one end or the other, then not g bad things happen, right? Um, so we want to be able to create balancing everything so that we're both comfortable. Um, and now that is not always so perfect, right? Like there isn't a line. I don't think, I think that the idea of, the, of balance in physics or something like that, I, I'm not a scientist, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think of balance that it will be equal. You put it on this side, on this side, and they'll eventually be the equal. Scale will equal but yeah. the balance in that, in the aspect of our relationship, I think it will, not, it's not always equal. But mm -hmm. what it means is that it gives and takes in a way that that neither one just gives out, right? Like, you know, there's going to be moments in which I have more energy and I'm more excited and then Mark is more low, but then my energy is able to pull him. There's going to be other moments when I'm down and he's going to be up and then, you know, and we help each other and there's that give and take. Um, but as long as he doesn't go too far to one side or the other, then we're okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so the idea of balance, so it's, it's, it's very, very important to us. We just keep on trying to, it's like, you know, where it, it, I think that balance and, and looking for that, um, fairness in our relationship is what gives, sp creates the space for growth. Um, yeah. where we don't feel afraid of sharing or being our true selves of saying how emo how excited you are or of saying how scared you may be because the other person is not going to react in a way that shuts you down, but still being able to express that this is hard for them, uh, but it's okay, right? And processing, going through that process together, um, that's been huge. It did not start that way, right? Yeah. It started with a lot of triggering each other, right? That he will share his excitement and my response will be to feel triggered and afraid. And oh my God, this means he's going to leave me. And oh my God, he's met, met somebody else. And oh my God, he's fallen in love, right? Or like things like that, uh, jumping the gun, right? Like jumping ahead to not without some, uh, uh, yeah, assuming things without really giving him the space to be honest and share um, calmly. And then I would get triggered because I'm like, I'm doing this quote unquote the right way. Like, why doesn't she trust me? Like, I'm not a liar. Like, why is she treating me like one? And then, and then I'd get defensive and, and it would just, that's where I said it created kind of that downward spiral mm -hmm. where we were just kind of like feeding off of each other's triggers. And it is, it's a hard thing to do to stop that cycle and do the work and say, hold on, 
like, I'm not going to assume this, but I want to ask it. And I would have to say, well, I'm feeling defensive, right? To actually say how you feel, I'm feeling defensive, but I want to know, like, are you accusing me of this? Or do you feel that I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. And when you actually kind of get to the, instead of making those assumptive questions or statements, you get to the core of like, okay, this is how I'm feeling. And I think both of us have been able to deal with that and say like, okay, I can respect that. I can, I can, I'm okay with you feeling that way. I, I, yeah, that's, that doesn't, you feeling X doesn't bother me. However, you reacting to that feeling and feeling defensive or, or acting accusatory, that can, that does bother me. And I'd appreciate if you didn't do that. So, but that's a hard, hard conversation and thing to do. Like it's, it's, I don't think it's the way our brains are wired us personally naturally and so it can be hard to break that wiring to do that rewiring yeah that's huge <laughs> yeah. It, and it takes time and it takes intention and it takes effort and it's yeah i mean i think opening up a relationship that has been monogamous for many years and almost like you know, you become society shows us and teaches us to become so enmeshed and codependent and all of that. And then trying to break that open and change those patterns, change those habits. Mm -hmm. It is incredibly difficult. And ultimately I know it, like it can be beautiful. It is beautiful, but that work, it just, you have to be wanting to do that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just had this we, conversation. Yeah, we just had this conversation. Actually, was it two nights ago? Two nights ago. Um, I think. Yeah. Which shows that we're still very new in the whole process. Like the conversation of like, this is not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy today. It's not going to be easy yesterday. If we stick with it, with non monogamy, if we stick with this, the relationship. you get with and with our relationship. Whether we go back to monogamy, right? Relationships are hard and they take work and they take effort. And so then there's either wow this is hard and yes we're gonna have days where you're just like oh i'm so tired you know this is exhausting putting in the work is exhausting but i want this versus this is hard work i don't want this anymore right and so to 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 stop and i really came to mark and i said okay like my issues with dealing healing from my trauma the work that i'm putting in on myself and how it still affects our relationship it's very difficult. It takes, it takes a lot of effort. You know, it can, it, there can be very hard days. And so, and, and me admitting that this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. And there's no guarantee that in a year or in 10 years, I will be all better. Actually, the likelihood is that as somebody who had childhood trauma, I will always carry this with me, right? There will always be effects of it. So then saying, are you in on this? Are you like committed to staying with this? Can you handle the work that this is going to take or do you want out? And those are hard conversations, but necessary because if you do not make sure that this is what you really want, then you're going to put effort into this, you know, and putting all this to, to just then waste it. Or do what right. so many people do where they just ignore it and bury it. And then it comes out in other unhealthy ways. And we didn't want either of those things. Um, but again, it's hard because my trigger is, you know, not being trusted. That's, that's my issue. Like I, I, you know, I, I try really hard. I have my whole life to do it the right way. Um, and you know, again, using air quotes, to people who are listening, um, and you know, when, when somebody, when I try to do something the right way and then somebody comes and like kind of questions it, I'm indignant. I'm like, how dare you? Like, there's so many people out there who are just happily doing it the wrong way or the, the moral way. And here you are questioning me. <laughs> like, and, and I know that sounds stupid, but it's just the way my brain, Oh, maybe oh, Finn's shaking his head. So he disagrees, but it's just the way my brain hears things. And I know it's, it could be sometimes egocentric. And I, I know sometimes it's, it's not that thought process is something that I struggle. And it's an ongoing thing to, 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 to not listen to and let dictate my, my actions. Yeah. Yeah. I was shaking my head because it's, um, it's a thought pattern that I share. And I'm curious, just, just for, for curiosity's sake, are you a bit of a perfectionist, Mark? 
<laughs> no, she is. I'm not a perfectionist. Um, but what I tend to do is I can disassociate very quickly. Okay. When I lose interest, I'm like, I'm done. Don't yeah. bother me. Leave me alone. And so, uh, I don't, I'm not a perfectionist. Um, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm, I'm happy in a mess. I'm happy. I can, but what I do to do that is I call it, I go to my nothing box in my brain. I just don't think about it, which isn't healthy either. I just, mm-hmm. you know, I'll just turn on the TV or I'll turn on my Xbox or I'll open my phone and I'll just veg out and just like, which again, isn't a healthy coping mechanism either. And it can create just as much chaos as, as a perfectionist can. Sure. Um, so, but that's, that's my thought process is like, I'm working hard to do this and I feel bad when somebody even insinuates that I'm not doing those things Got it. and I have to, I have to fight to not let those feelings, uh, dictate what I say and what, and, and how I act and, and to just take, just, just identifying them. I think for both of us was hard just to actually pause for a second and say, Hey, here's what I feel was an incredibly like a breakthrough type thing that it was, but it was really hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. And I asked that question because my, I think my, um, you and I land in a very similar place when it comes to that being a little bit indignant. And I often tie mine. It's similar in the sense that like, you're questioning my integrity, you're questioning my trustworthiness and all of that. And there's also a part of me that says, look, I, I have been searching for a way to do this perfectly for a number of hours that you probably couldn't even fathom. Like (laughs) weeks, months, I've spent 15 hours a day thinking about this to come to the quote unquote right answer. Yeah. And for you to then say, well, I don't, I don't know if that's the right answer. It's very challenging for me to absorb because I'm like, I've dedicated the last three weeks of my life to seeking out this solution. Mm-hmm. And you've you You're seem, that. seemingly have not. You're just poo pooing on it. You're just and, like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So I, it that seems like we object, yeah. and they're just like dumping mud on it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was going to be. I could do that with my thoughts. I could do that with my my opinions mm-hmm. um, because I think a lot about the things that I believe. And when I go to a topic, um, I like like one of my even though I work I work in construction, but one of my hobbies I, and in my former life I worked in finance. And so like economics is really interesting to me. So I think a lot about economics and, and, and as exam and I've, I've gotten in some like arguments or debates with people where they literally are like, I can't talk to you. Like I'm leaving this conversation because I'm like, I'm, I go into it sometimes trying to prove them wrong mm-hmm. and show this beautiful idea or opinion that I've crafted with my own hands <laughs> and made and now i have to like have you like dirty it and like how dare you so i don't do <laughs> that agree with it <laughs> <laughs> well but, no, but i think what you just said there is spot on brew which is the the outcome of that for partners is just agree because if i if i question this idea it's not going to go well and then that's that's the work of I might hold this so true and you can have a different truth, Mm -hmm. but then how do you decouple it and say, you go live yours, I'm going to live mine. That to me is where, I mean, that's partly the work we're doing right now is me being like, okay, yeah, you think differently than me. You see, you look at this problem and you see a different solution. You should follow your solution and I'm going to follow my solution. And then I hope we I hope we are both right and that that your solution works for you and that mine works for me. Or at and the bare minimum right. we can come together and say you know even if one didn't work or one worked or one didn't or or maybe they both were where, wherever it falls mm-hmm. it's like we can still come together and say uh I love you, I respect you, I want to be with you, it's okay if it's different, you know. Mm-hmm. Or totally. not and s- be true to yourself and say well, this is a, this is a, a, it makes us in, in a way that's fundamentally incompatible mm-hmm. and I have to love myself, uh, and, and let that guide my, my actions. But that's very, very, it's not a, it's hard. It's hard. That's, I think that was a huge, there's been a huge part too of, um, 
my difficulty with, like I said, I am a perfectionist and, uh, and failure is hard, 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 hard. I've worked my whole life to excel. This was in school, in relationships, whatever I took on, I will try my hardest to be at the top. Um, and because Again, because of my drama, it was all about my value. Without these achievements, without these successes, I'm nothing. And I need to achieve these things. And I need to have this success in order for others to love me and care for me. And that's what attracts them towards me. So then if I don't have these things, then I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. So then I work really, really, really hard. And so then to come into, uh, in, into non-monogamy and explore and to be like, Oh my God, this is a great thing. Look, there's so much, so many stories of people who have been successful. And so there's so much growth to, to gain through it, but there's also a lot of suffering, right? That can happen. There's a lot of failure that can happen as well. And so then to, to come to terms with this can be amazing and it could also destroy us. It's even harder than that, I think. I think it's like you have to redefine failure and success. You have to like, yeah. again, like yeah. it's a whole paradigm shift. Yeah. Yeah. It's like to the outside world, if we were to divorce after nearly 18 years or separate after 18 years of marriage, everyone that I know would look at that and say, that's a failure. Like you guys, your marriage failed. And it would be so hard to, obviously I'm not going to be able to, you know, talk to every single person, but it's hard to just accept that. But like in our own lives and we, ha you have to define success and failure for yourself. And when you do that, where you always look outside for that validation, it's really, really, really hard to do that. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, not that yeah. we're looking to separate. <laughs> so people are aware. Yeah, no, not but where we are right now. <laughs> totally. But that is what you just kind of said, Mark, is exactly is, uh, to me, it's a reword of what Bruce said earlier, which is we can't burn ourselves to keep the other person warm. And so Right. If you get to a place where you're both looking at the, the construct of your relationship or your marriage and saying, if we both continue down this, we're just going to keep burning ourselves to warm each other up. Mm -hmm. We're actually, we need to redefine this in a way that allows us to both be warm without burning. Mm -hmm. Then you haven't failed. You've succeeded at being yourself and supporting the other person and being themselves. But that might mean an appearance of failure to the outside yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, to the world. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. For some people to get a C in a class is a success. <laughs> and, and, well, it's true. But look, she's thinking about it right now. Oh, she's I like, know. in a class? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I relate. I relate. For me, I remember a lot of times being like, I got a C. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, what's coming to me too is what you're describing is almost like the the and Finn and I have this conversation just the other day of like the things that are hard for each of you almost like fuel the other person and fit perfectly into this puzzle of like yeah. if you aren't careful you go down these paths of cycling and down the drain yeah and and so you have to stop you have to stop and be intentional and be like wait 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 you're thinking about this different and all of the things in your life and the way you are and everything make you think that way. And I'm thinking this way. Can yep. we slow down and like talk about this yep. and uh, ultimately then make that decision of like at some point, like, do you want to keep doing the work? Do you want to keep working on that relationship? Or at some point you don't want to. And yes. again, but then that's not necessarily a failure. It's reframing yes. all of that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's, but that's so hard. And I, I, I think totally that, that idea of like how does he, he goes back to how he processes things and how he, his personal feelings to us, we are exploring these things and how I come into it with my baggage. Um, and the, especially when it comes to the distrust of, how his intentions, right? Or what is it that he's thinking? Is he thinking of me? If he, is he considering me in this picture as we're still together? And he can hear my questions and my assumptions and things like that and feel like, how could you not see that I am trustworthy, right? How could you not see that I love you? How could you not see that I, I, I have your best interest in mind? Um, and, and then I have to explain to him because he's not in my brain or in my body. I have to explain. And, and I enjoy being they, in your body, though. <laughs> 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 uh, well, well, comedic relief, nice. 
uh, I've had to share a lot and like and um help him almost get a picture into what I go through, right? Get it, and that's going to happen through sharing articles, videos, podcasts, different things that talk about uh, complex PTSD. And and I could just so people understand who are listening, and and if you guys get a better picture, just I don't have to go into great detail, but I was um, sexual abused by uh, my step grandfather when I was a child uh, for more than one time, and I know there's a trigger warning there for people, um, and that didn't come out to anybody else. I held this in me and buried it for almost thirty years. Uh, and it didn't, I shared it with Mark, um, when I was pregnant with our youngest, who is five. And, uh, so that was a lot of years of my brain processing things in a way of carrying that trauma and not dealing with it. And it affect every area of my life, including my relationships. So then we go get into the whole dynamic today of my trust issues, not being related to what Mark is doing but being related to the the past and the and the trauma and then it being triggered because um i actually shared an article with him recently that explained what cptsd is like when you are a child versus as a grown up and how as a child and your brain is developing and you have this trauma that happens and it shatters your world as it is and then you start seeing the world from a different perspective of everybody's out to get me I'm, I'm going to get hurt. People, you know, people will say that they love me, but they don't because they're going to do something bad to me. You can't trust, you know, and I kind of waiting for the shoe to drop or the, you know, something bad to happen. Living with that paranoia that, uh, always protecting myself, defending myself. So then as Mark will come to me with, um, curiosities or sharing things about him, then I'm like, I got to protect myself. I put up my walls. I'm ready to fight because you're going to hurt me. This is what my body knows. This is what my brain knows. So that's the mode that I go into. And then the process now has been, instead of doing, right, reacting, saying, whoa, I'm feeling triggered. This scares me. This is difficult for me. This is what I'm feeling. My brain is saying, do this, but I'm rationally thinking through it. And is it fire or is it smoke, right? Do I need to react do i need to fight now or or am i still safe and then knowing the difference and then being able to communicate that to mark so that he understands where i'm coming from is exhausting <laughs> it is so difficult right um but it's also so worth it when that when you know on hard days it sucks and on good days when i'm able to see the progress that we've made the growth the healing it's so rewarding, right? And we wouldn't be where we are right now if we hadn't done all that work, you know, because we could very easily be like, no, this is scary. I'm not doing it, right? This triggers me. I'm not doing it. And we're not doing that. We're saying this is scary, but it's necessary. It's worth it. We need to go through it. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm making him emotional. <laughs> um, and and I end that check-ins, like you said, Emma, of are you still in it? You know, okay. Like this is hard. You know, do we, are we still on the same page? Do we still want this for each other and with each other? Okay. Then let's keep going. And it's okay. if We will, were to come to a checking where that is not the answer where the answer is no, I'm done or I want something else. It will still be extremely difficult, but, but I think part of the growth is that like understanding that we must love each ourselves and and be true to ourselves even if that meant that we cannot be with each other right that it doesn't work for the for our relationship yeah <laughs> sorry it's okay i know there was a lot that i just like shared all at once but she backed up the dump truck <laughs> <laughs> no no i appreciate bru you sharing all of that and giving context to your lived experience and your life uh it's incredibly vulnerable and just thank you for for sharing because un, i mean unfortunately i know there's there's people out there that can relate and will relate and putting that out there and just the way you did thank you 
Yeah. And what I could say is her partner in all of this is like, and if, if somebody's listening out there and they've been through maybe something similar as her and the reason why, like I, I was shedding a tear and you might hear the emotion in my voice is because <clears throat> as her, you know, her husband, as her partner is like, I've seen that growth and it's so beautiful. It's just. Oh, he's going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay tears are okay tears are good and it's worth it it's been worth it it's been <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> it's been something that's been just you know again very beautiful and, and very very worth it yeah make a joke somebody <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a relationship blooper you'd like to tell <laughs> Worst, worst timing ever for that question. This podcast and the, and Mark couldn't stop crying. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I will say this, Mark and Brew, we've we've cried on here before. There's an episode that we did about two years ago. We had to shut it off in the middle because I completely lost it. So you're you're in good company. Yes, yeah, tears of joy because it's like I look back on you know again like. I use the I use the analogy like a few times where it's like it's like you go like we when when we started transitioning to a more non-monogamous relationship it was like there was that grief like it was almost like you were leaving uh an old home that you grew up in but it doesn't suit you anymore it doesn't fit you and so you know like after everything's been moved out you like walk through the halls you look at it you shit <laughs> um you remember all the memories the good times the bad times and then you know it's emotional it's but you know like okay we're in our case at least we're not leaving this house my ear quotes again because it's bad for us or you know it's just that we have grown outgrown. we've outgrown mm -hmm. it and it doesn't suit us anymore so now we're going to this other thing and so when I look at that, I'm like, oh, wow, it's, it's, we had a, we, we didn't have a, you know, quote unquote bad marriage when we were monogamous. It just, we fell into some traps that when you're monogamous, generally speaking, and I know it's a little bit of a stereotype, you just don't address. They just get swept under the rug. And now that, you know, in kind of a, almost independent of, monogamy versus non-monogamy i look at it and i'm like wow we're so much in such a better spot today and we happen to be exploring this great adventure of non-monogamy that's fun and exciting and and scary but that's what adventure is yeah i love that and i love your your analogy or metaphor about the house and when you move out and i think to to even build on that right you you've left one and you move into the new one and right, the, the, it's move in ready, but like what, at what point, right? Moving into non-monogamy, it's not move in ready. You, you've got to paint the walls. You probably redo the flooring. You might have to fix the foundation. I mean, that's yeah. a big one, right? Yeah. So you've, you've got so much work for your new house to actually be livable. Mm -hmm. And so there's a spell where you're like, well, we're living with a tarp on the roof and plastic in the windows and we're cooking yeah, yeah, yeah. on a camp stove. Like that's what we're doing right now because we're yeah. rebuilding something that is a better suited home for us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And fixing it while you're living in it is hella hard. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And sometimes you wish it was all moving right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I wish, that, so, that process is so difficult and all the repairs can take so much time and effort and money, <laughs> and, right? Like mm -hmm. in that sense, uh, that you may have days when you just wish you were on the other end, right? At the, you know, past all that work, past all the repairs, past all the that time. Um, but what is success without the process to get to it, you know? Yeah. One of my favorite, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big hip hop fan, rap fan. One of my favorite artists is a guy by the name of J. Cole, and he has this song called Love Yours. And in the, in that song, he just says, there's beauty in the struggle. And it's incredibly hard when you're in the struggle to, to recognize it. But 
you know, as you get like, again, like we've, we're on the other side quote, we've, we've done some stuff. Like we have fixed the roof. Maybe we have, you mm-hmm. know, we've addressed some things and then you look at it and you're like, and that's why I got emotional before. Cause it's like, wow, look at it. It's, there it is. It, it's beautiful and it's suiting and it fits us and it, we don't feel cramped or, you know, um, uncomfortable. uncomfortable or it's like, this is ours. We've made it and and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Which is also much more rewarding than moving into a house with a new roof already on it. Right. Yeah. 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 And you know, the move in ready is great, but the work is the work is the power. That's the thing that connects you. Then it's, then when you leave that one, you're like, that's our fucking roof. That's not the roof that came along with the house. Yeah. 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 Yeah, You built, we built it with our blood, sweat and tears. I I hope that, I I think my desire we for just, the world, <laughs> no, for the world, right? I have those idealistic views sometimes is that every relationship is like that, right? That people don't feel like they are given a house, right? How nice is it when people, you know, here's a down payment, go, this is your house, you know? And it's like, yeah, but what if once I'm in it, it doesn't fit. It doesn't feel good. Or it I don't to a like sense it. Of entitlement right. Order. It doesn't. I oh, I gotta live here now. You know, or you feel somebody trapped, yeah. gave it to me. They told me this is a house I have to be in. But what if it's not good? You know that the hope is that everybody will be able to make their that a house their home. Yeah. Right. That yeah. that that is what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Can we have you two back on sometime soon? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you both for just such a beautiful conversation and deep conversation. Uh, You know, I know there's a million more questions we could ask you. And as Finn said, we'd love to have you both back on for more for for another update and conversation, just because like there's just there's so much here. And we really, really, really appreciate everything you've shared today thank you for doing this we're, yeah. we're huge fans it feels like in part of our nervousness i was like oh we're gonna be talking to celebrities like oh. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> like we're, we're, we're huge admirers of your work in the community that you guys uh have, have, created. have, have created and and uh so thank you for having us and thank you for all your work yeah appreciate it thank you and and next time you'll be less nervous. We'll have to figure out a different sandwich to talk about, but <laughs> uh-huh. we'll, we'll figure it out. And bef- before we go, like, is there anything else that either of you wanted to get out there on this episode? I know, like, we covered a lot of ground, and I just, I just want to, um, you know, we're wrapping up kind of because of time, and we don't want this episode to be three hours long. But we'll have to do. It part easily two. could be, but it, it would be amazing. Be. It would be an amazing three-hour podcast. Yeah, and so I don't. Necess- I like. I feel like it's kind of an abrupt ending, but I also want to give you both an opportunity to like share anything else. Like, They're called cliffhangers. <laughs> okay, that's, yeah. a good, that's true. <laughs> yeah, right. Tune in for next. <laughs> that's right. To be continued. <laughs> um, I would. I would say, uh, for anybody listening that seek seek to learn um right reach out because doing this alone is harder than it needs to be uh seek community we found that in the beginning when we were doing it on our own and like kind of researching and listening but uh, it was it helped but then once we started looking for community uh joining your community on um uh, mighty and then also a uh, local community that we recently found um and it just helps us feel less lonely it helps us feel um connected right it it's, it's helps it encourages us right when you hear about other people's success and or and challenges. It, it, or challenges right um uh yes can you do it alone yeah but if you could do it with support and and help um it will be so much better. So I will say that like find a way to, to connect with others. Uh, we are welcome. If anybody, you know, I think we, did we share information? I think with the emails or things like that. Um, we are on the, on the mighty app. So if anybody that hears this feels that something that we said resonated with them, you know, we're always welcome to, uh, we're always willing to talk to people and we welcome that we'd like to connect with others. I love that. Thank you for your, I mean, that's incredibly generous. And, and I think too, just appreciate you mentioning that you're part of our community and have been for a while. And I think it's just, uh, for anybody out there who's ever wondering, like, what are the people in that community like? 
this this is what our community is like and you're not the only two in there who... bunch of large men who cry that's right that's right, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we're doing that <laughs> so yeah i i just i'm just very grateful that you two are part of our community and now part of the history of this this thing we've created so, podcast yeah yeah that podcast yeah we cool. feel the same way yeah we've yeah mark was there anything on your end that you wanted to say uh, no, nothing off the top of my head. We're just, like I said, we're thankful to be where we are and, you know, um, we're very thankful for the work you guys have done. So that's it. Thank you. So you Thank had you. a blooper. We did think about a blooper. We did think about a blooper, but they didn't ask it yet. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. It's, it's, it's actually blooper. It's actually blooper time now. Okay. So on our, we, when we were doing the hot wifing thing, uh, we had said, we met this guy and we were going to do, um, it was going to be our first threesome ever. And, um, I sometimes, um, my, when I get excited, uh, I told you that I'm the gas. Well, I'm also the gas in my own head and I can, my mind could start spinning at a million revolutions per minute and I get like overload. So in the beginning, one of the things I did is that I, I used, um, some medical help to help me stay in the moment and be able to perform. Um, so that I usually would take a certain dose of that medicine that worked for me. And I, and for whatever reason that night, when we set it up, uh, we were like, we were meeting at a hotel and we're going to do it. And I'm like, I'm going to be like, I want to be rock. Hard I'm going to be the I'm king of sex like this all night. <laughs> I am going to be the king of sex tonight. And for whatever reason, I didn't take more than like they tell you you can take, but I took the max dose, which mm-hmm. was way too much for me. And I then went on to experience massive headaches, the worst dry mouth I've ever had in my life. In the middle of it, I kept going to the bathroom because I'm like, I don't even drink. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue was like glued because I just, and, and, and it had the opposite effect. I was, I had a little bit of trouble performing because I, my my head was pounding and my mouth was so dry. And so afterwards I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that again. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. Like I really got in my like, like (laughs) dumb male brain and just take more and like, It'll help you. And, 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 oh man, it was so, it was funny afterwards. And I handled it, I think, okay, in the, in the beginning, in the middle of it. But just looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking? Like, why would I take so much of this stuff that made me underperform? Uh, I think pretty, pretty badly. So anyway, that's, that's our, that's our, I love that. Thank you for sharing that. A cautionary tale. And I will say, and, yeah. L- very, very likely relatable to people out there. <laughs> or people here. Or pe- or people here. Or people in here. <laughs> yeah, the the those performance enhancing pharmaceuticals, they uh, I don't know all of the science, but they definitely for me it's like it's like I have an immediate sinus infection. Um, <laughs> if, I, if I take too much. And so like my nose will be stuffed. My yeah. eye, like my face turns bright red. Plus, like she knows within a minute. She's like, "Did you?" I was like, <laughs> "No." Yeah. No. And so yeah, it's like my face is, and I, and then I'm like, I can't breathe through my nose. So then I'm like a mouth breather. It's just, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's really good. It's so flattering. I yeah, love to see it. No, yeah, trying. it's a good look. I don't want to brag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but then we learn we learn from it and then don't do it again yeah that's yeah. right uh, the, the tip is balance balance as in all things balance. Yes. Yeah. that's yeah. the word of the day the word of the day balance yeah I well thank it. thank you both and thank you for sharing that too we so appreciate both of you and love this conversation and can't wait to talk again soon yeah, yeah thank same, you so much same thanks for having us again and, and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> we're back to synchronized uh, outroing. For, for this one today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brew and Mark, for everything. We love talking to you and just love the conversation. Appreciate the vulnerable shares and can't wait to check back in in the future and see how things are going. And by future, she means like three minutes because you're in our virtual community <laughs> and we can check in anytime we freaking want to. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> 
But thank you again for everything. And just a reminder to all of you, we have a virtual meet and greet coming up on October 20th. We have our Ask Us Anything episodes, which are just recently launched, and we need your questions for myself and Miche to answer. To send us those questions, again, you head over to our website, you click on the podcast tab, and then there's a a little button there that says ask us anything and that's the one you click yes we're super excited to hear your questions and can't wait and with that next week we have a beautiful interview with orit we're super excited about this one so come back and listen in one week and in the meantime have a fabulous weekend and i think that's it do you have anything else just be amazing yeah that's what i would say bye everyone thanks for listening